Hi, I'm Bob Gruen, and welcome to my virtual book release and birthday party. Celebrating the release of my autobiography, Right Place, Right Time. And the serendipity of my life has often led me to the right place at the right time. And then I did the right thing, and I got pictures to bring back and document the culture of our history. It's all, I've been telling stories for years to many people, and uh, they're all written down here in the book, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, now this year, since we couldn't have an actual birthday party crowding into a room like I've done for many years, Jesse Mallon, who's been helping me put on my party, suggested that we do this video party. And he got his editor and director, Dave Stecker, to put together some videos. Jesse contacted a lot of my friends to send in tribute videos. I think you're going to enjoy them. There's quite a few very funny ones, uh, very touching ones, uh, as well as some rare videos that I made at Max's Kansas City, of bands like Blondie and the Heartbreakers and New York Dolls and Patti Smith with Lenny Kay in the very early days. And we did a nice interview with Lenny Kay at the Marston Hotel Gallery, who's doing a good job selling my signed prints. And Lenny and I talk about the stories in the book. I just hope you'll enjoy this video. It's got a lot of music. My friend Supla sent in a great version of John Lennon's Imagine. And anyway, on with the show. Happy birthday, Bob. My name is Sean Lennon and I approve this message. Oh, why do you want to see how you look in here? Happy birthday. Yes, yes do it. Oh, honey. Yeah. <laughs> ah, you know, you know, like that in the Let it burn up. Oh, my oh, my other for quite a while. Happy yeah. 75th birthday. Who knows? Three quarters of a century. How'd wow. you do it? I have no idea. It's no fault of my own. Um, I actually remember when I was 19, I didn't think I'd be 25. Because I remember when I was 25, I went, oh my God, I'm still alive. I better start, you know, doing things. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and later that year, I met I can Tina Turner. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so. so that was kind of like when you really started getting into being a photographer, was I Cantina? Being a music photographer. Um, I started photography when my mom taught me how to develop and print pictures when I was five. It was nice. her hobby. And I was too big to leave running around the house and too little to go to sleep early. And she took me in and I literally was developing film and tanks, wow. counting seconds. And by the time I was eight, she saw my interest and gave me a, my first camera, a Brownie Hawkeye. And when I went to camp at 11, I took pictures of the kids in the play, Oklahoma, sent the film to my mom. She made pictures, made prints, sent them back, and I sold it to the kids. So I actually was working as a photographer. I took pictures at local parties and things. But it was when I met Ike and Tina Turner, and they introduced me to their publicist, Mark Greifinger, who brought me to Billy Smith, and one thing led to another. He hired me for Elton John. And um, that was, 1970 was the beginning of... I guess you know by now that we never, ever do nothing nice and easy. <laughs> it's because you see, we always do it nice and rough. Oh, yeah. We're going to take the beginning of this song and we're going to do it easy. Then we're gonna do the finish. Right. This is the way we do. Proud man. No, we don't be. Working for a man every night and day. 
I don't know, I just fell in with them. I was so comfortable with them. Uh, that was an amazing accident that uh, a friend of ours said we had to go see Argentina, and we went to the Honka Monka Room in Queens. The first I saw them at the Felt Forum, and they were amazing, opening for Sam and Dave. I didn't even see Sam and Dave. I was watching the curtain where Tina danced off. I was mesmerized. 
And so we went back a couple of days later, uh, Hanka Monka room. I brought my camera for the first time and took a bunch of pictures. And I got some good ones and one really great one that is probably my opus that um, it, it, Tina dances off of the strobe light and I left the camera oh, open yeah, yeah. for a so second and it's like five it. Tinas in one picture. Kind of lysergic, wouldn't you say? Well, it, it's kind of like the Duchamp nude descending the staircase. It's not really clear, but it's clear that there's excitement and it's yes, Tina yes, Turner yes. and it's totally. amazing. And, and she goes from here to there in a, in a second, you know. And, um, and I brought the pictures with me a couple of days later. We went to see another Ike and Tina show in New Jersey. And um, I brought them to show my friends. But as we were walking out, my friend Judy saw Ike Turner going from one dressing room to another. Uh, it was a theater in a round with trailer dressing rooms. And she pushed me in front of Ike and said, show Ike the pictures, and literally pushed me into the rest of my life. Wow. Because he stopped, he's got a deep voice. He goes, what pictures? And I said, well, I got these pictures. And he goes, here's really good pictures. I got to show this to Tina. And he takes me in the dressing room. All of a sudden, I'm standing next to Tina Turner. Wow. She said, oh, these are great pictures. I like these. And she starts looking at the contacts, and she likes them. And I never show people the contacts, because there's a lot of bad ones in there. Yeah, yeah. But then he says, meet me in New York on Monday. I want you to meet my publicist. And that was the beginning. And I started t touring. <clears throat> uh, the next year, when they came back to town, I had a videotape machine. They loved that I could videotape the bands. Uh, I started traveling with them a little bit, but by the next year, they actually took me to California and all over the place. It's all in the book, all these oh, stories. Okay. Uh, I think it was in the second time I went to visit them, I, there was a woman waiting at the door, and she said, are you going to visit Ike? And I said, yeah. She said, do you mind if I come in with you? I said, no, sure. And she said, I'm Vicki Wickham. I manage LaBelle. Um, Patty LaBelle is like Tina Turner, but different. <laughs> and I did three album covers for LaBelle. Nice, nice, so nice. as soon as I met Ike and Tina, and then I met Billy Smith, and I met Elton John, and it was just the ball started Bye. rolling. Hey, hey, Bob. Happy birthday, man. What a fucking crazy year, huh? Anyway, just wanted to say happy birthday and Thanks for all your help over the years. Thanks for the great photos. Still remember you standing on top of the table upstairs at Max's with your giant uh, border pack and tripod and capturing all that great footage that you've captured over the years. So happy birthday, Bob. This is Clem Burke saying peace and love. Hi, Elizabeth, everybody. Hang in there, we'll get there. Happy birthday, Bob Gruen. Hello, Joe. Singing that old fashioned song. Thank you. 
Hi, Bob. It's kind of unbelievable that you're not having a birthday party this year, although I believe there were uh, one or two years where you didn't have your, your big bash. But um, I, I still want to say happy birthday. I still love you, and um, I think that you're, it's very exciting that your book is going to be coming out, and I look forward to that. But um, have a great birthday and many more, and go out and get them, killer. Bye. <laughs> How'd you get, start hanging out with Blondie? Uh, I remember the day Lisa Robinson called up. We were doing Rock Scene Magazine mm -hmm. for a couple of years at that point. And I remember her phrase, she said, you have to go and see this woman. She's really beautiful and she's going to be a big star. And I think the club was Mothers in oh, Midtown. Yeah, 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 some yeah. funky little club. And I still remember the moment I walked in the door, funky, little, you know, old, broken kind of door. And there's a little stage over on the right. And I turned and I saw Debbie and the stilettos early, before Blondie. Right, Elda. And uh, Elda and Rosie. Uh, yeah. And I was stunned, because Debbie just is the most beautiful person there is. And, uh, and I thought, wow, Lisa's right. Like, this girl's just beautiful, and she sings, and she's quirky. And then I saw the letters again at CBGB's when they were first starting CBGB's. Uh, and then when they started Blondie, I started seeing them more and more. We got to be friends, and they were nice people. And Debbie is just the funniest, down to earth, New Jersey, punky attitude, okay. fun person to hang out with, and we just got to be friends. And um, it was, and, you know, it, I've seen them around, around the world. I saw them in Europe a couple of times, and uh, and it, it's fun. Nice that when I got an award one time from the Lennon tribute uh, concert, and Debbie gave me the award, and she mentioned that when she came to CBGB, she see my car, which is a big old 57, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. 54 Buick, you know, that big old rock and roll car I had. And Debbie said that when she saw my car at CB, she knew everything was gonna be all right. That she wasn't wrong tonight, was a, uh, there was a reason to be at CB's because nice, nice. I had figured it out too. Huh. And if I was there, it was cool. Way, way cool. And, uh, and that was a nice thing to say. Hey, Bob, congrats on the book and 75 years on the planet. Wow. When I was a kid, I was a huge fan of your photographs. And when I got to meet you, I realized you're as cool as the people you shot, maybe cooler. You know, the connection to the past, the present, and the future of rock music. You've always been a great friend. You have a lot of heart and a lot of soul. I love you to the moon and back. Thank you for everything. Happy birthday. When did you meet me, Bob? 1968, Oh, my actually. God. Um, my girlfriend, soon to be my wife, was a friend of Ronnie Hoffman, who was the girlfriend of uh, Richard, Richard Meltzer, Meltzer, one of yeah. the early rock critics. And she, we, we threw a birthday party at my wife's parents' apartment. And he knew everybody. Richard Meltzer knew everybody. So you and Lisa Robinson and Steve Paul came with Tiny Tim with his little ukulele in the shopping bag. Um, it was quite a party. It was a fun night. And it was kind of like the social circle we ran in. And when... Uh, we were all doing rock scene the, yeah. uh, the, the after the alternative to the alternative. Well, rock scene started a couple of years later, '72, and I'm in every issue from the first to the last. I actually looked at it. And up. I wrote a lot of photo <laughs> you captions. You wrote the best captions. There were, there were very mem a rare portrait, perhaps. <laughs> yes, uh, a, a sip between snaps. <laughs> but yeah, it's, nobody's had the career in the sense of like I sort of like in Tina Turner and LaBelle and then Elton John and then John Lennon and then. Elements memory actually led me to the New York Dolls, which led me to CBGB's, which led me to The Clash and Blondie and Patti Smith and all these other things. I mean, that's when I saw you in the band, you know. I remember walking in to CBGB's and you were, uh, had just started playing at Max's early on with Patti. And it just caught on your hair went past your waist. And I <laughs> walked in one night, I walked out, no, I walked into CBs one night, and you'd cut it back like shoulder length, like this kind of length, and, and it was kind of style. I was like, whoa, rock star, you know? I and you really move. did kind of transition into a very good writer who became a stage personality. And, well, you and, know, you got to address know. both levels. I'm very lucky, you know, as yeah. a musician, I don't think about what I play, I don't read music. Mm. I'm, you know, I turn off the writerly part of me but it's nice when I get off the road and you do something where it's just you and not five other people telling you exactly where oh, they well, think. Oh, well, yeah, being in a band, yeah, be. yeah. Well, I'm, I, that's one thing for me. I always worked independently. Yeah. Uh, in the early 70s, I got into the videotape and I started making tapes before anybody else was doing it. I actually had a channel. And you have on, a great video on, of uh, uh, early Patty and us at uh, Max's Yeah, you and, you and Patty at Max's 74. Yeah. yeah. 
really uh, early, early before days. we had uh, another guitar player or, or yeah. J.D. Doherty, the drummer. Yeah. I mean, you know, before when we were thinking about how we could become a rock and roll band without becoming Being a, a rock and roll <laughs> band. Right. One, two, three, four. It did pretty well because I remember I was seeing it at Max's and it was very minimal and Patty was still was doing some poetry and the poems would kind of lead into a rhythm and then she'd start singing. And then one night I actually saw the Rolling Stones at Madison Square Garden and came down to Bleecker Street and saw you guys at the Bitter End. Oh, wow. And I walked in and you were playing Time is on Our Side. <laughs> and I just felt, yes, it is because it was so much more fun in a club. Totally. You know, where people were mingling than to be in Madison Square Garden where people are three blocks away up in a seat with binoculars. You know, the stones are great. Whole, it's a whole different experience. I mean, I'm all for the downtown. big spectacle and the beautiful presentation and the, but also when you walk into a sweaty rock club downtown mm -hmm. somewhere and there's all these crazy people who are, who are there for the moment and perhaps if you capture them in your camera mm -hmm. eye for all time, um, you know, that to me is where is, is where the heart of rock and roll lives. I saw the Boomtown Rats when they came to New York and they played the Academy of Music. Um, they were great, the band was great, and then afterwards there was a cool after party that Susan Blonde put together. Ah, so Susan. Andy Warhol was there, John Hansen was there, he was meeting the cream of New York. Uh, we got to be friendly, and in fact the next day David and I took uh, Bob and his wife um, Paula shopping around New York. I remember going to Trash and Fordville, actually going to a Blondie recording session with them. Nice. And so we started getting to know each other a bit. He, came to Japan, you know, at one point I got an apartment in Japan to kind of dry out after the 70s, <laughs> 79, 80, I got an apartment in Tokyo and actually lived there for a while. And they played there, and so then I spoke English, so he hung out even more with me, and because I knew what was going on in Tokyo. And we just kind of stayed friendly all those years. Amazing. And, uh, and now he just sent me this nice birthday tribute. That so. is so great. <laughs> We love him, such a good heart. He does so much good work. You know, last year I got to spend some time with him because they made a documentary on the Boomtown Rats and he was in New York for a few days and we had some lunches and dinners. And he is just so fascinating and how he just goes out there and it doesn't matter, he's a rock star, he's a guy with a voice and he uses it. And there was one point in Parliament where he started, this, these conservatives were doing some kind of boat thing, so he came out with another boat, and it's all on YouTube, like him blocking the Parliament, or blocking these politicians with his boat, and they're shouting at each other on the water, and the police show up. And he is fearless. And he just goes out and he does the right thing for people as much as he can. Amen. So oh, that's why uh, he's Sir Bob. Well, you know, I always like that phrase, <laughs> Sir Bob. And, oh. and when I get an email or something from him, it's like Bob one, uh, BG one to BG two. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, but it's just amazing to me that I can be friends with Sir Bob. You know? Oh yeah. And, well, and he's you know, a downright good friends guy. Friends are friends, and we're all yeah. we're all in this together. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Bob Gruen, happy birthday to you and to your book. Um, let me talk about uh, your photographs. When um, myself and the Boomtown Rats showed up in New York, Gruen 
we never perceived him as a photographer of the scene. We perceived him as being actually part of the scene. Didn't really see a difference between him and the Ramones or the Dolls or Andy. And that's really the difference in the photographs. They're, they're more participatory than they are observational. And uh, I guess that's because he was. Um, never really observing, but a friend of the New York Dolls, a friend of John and Yoko's, a friend of the Ramones, understanding what the moment was and um, helping propel that moment through his imagery. And uh, recently I had to go to New York and was with him in, in, uh, in his office and going through the old photographs. And they bring you right back into exactly the smell of CBGBs or, or the thrill of seeing the New York Dolls for the first time or maybe understanding the, the um, liberation that John felt by being in New York and being part of it. And uh, that's why his photographs are different. That's why they're genuinely special. That's why they are the document of that that um, that moment, that exciting moment, at least in my life. So. Um, He's very good. He's a great photographer. The book will be amazing. Congratulations and happy birthday, BG, the other BG. So thank you to the Morrison Hotel Gallery. Yep, yeah. This beautiful setting that we have here. They've done very well. Uh, uh, how many years has the gallery been here now? Around 20 years. 20, right? We're getting up to 20. Uh, they're the premium photo gallery. They sell my prints around the world. Um, they've been doing okay through the, through this time. Well, people uh, they're doing a lot on online. Well, home. people are sitting home going, why don't I have my favorite picture on that blank wall over exactly. there? Exactly. So we've been doing okay here at the gallery, Morrison Hotel Gallery. Uh, it's not a hotel. That's the name of the gallery. Right. Um, but uh, I love them. They've been selling pictures all over the world. Oh, good for them. Good for you. And... Uh, I'll see you on the bestseller list, Bobby. All right, all right. Okay. Hey, Bob. Happy birthday from the bottom of my uh, heart. Uh, imagine there's no Bob Gruen birthday bash. What are we going to do? Well, do it virtually. Happy, happy birthday. Play some loud music. Enjoy yourselves, you and Elizabeth, and uh, catch you next year. It was an interesting time then, too, because... For instance, a place like Max's Kansas City, in the back room, you would have musicians and what constituted the rock press at that time. Mm. Lisa Robinson, Richard right. Robinson. Danny uh, Fields. Danny Fields, Lillian Robinson. Lee Childers. Yeah, Lee Black. I mean, just great people. And we would be hanging with the artists, Alice Cooper, mm. the Dolls. Uh, any visiting artist, actually, that came through and went to the back room there, it was like a real petri dish of, uh, mm. you know, fun and games. Mm. And, you know, also, you got to know each other beyond a backstage right. or an or a onstage. Mm. You know, you got to hang out. And that's, yeah. of course, one of the Through things you specialize <laughs> in, I believe. I do a lot of hanging out. Um, and this book is actually a, a final vindication uh, that my life meant something, that I wasn't just hanging out, that hanging out was what they call networking nowadays. Oh. You know, and I was actually meeting people, making contacts, making arrangements. Um, and yeah, that was what put You're it all together. You're a hard worker. I've never seen you not hard work. I well, have seen you who... dancing on a table at five, but you also knew I, how I don't to get dance on tables, but um, often uh, <laughs> I might have. I don't deny. It's not um, too late, Bob. But for somebody like who got into this because he didn't want to work, uh, my whole concept was turn on, tune in, drop out, and just you know right. somehow manage to pay the rent. Well, somehow managing to pay the rent, I found out that people would pay me for photos, and photos were easy for me. But then the work got to be constant because I always felt I was working until I finished developing, made the picture. If I went to sleep and the picture wasn't made, I wasn't finished. Right. I woke up and I still had work to do because each day there was new things. So every night I would develop and print at four in the morning, five in the morning when I came home, take a little nap, go out and do it again. And all of a sudden I found I was working 24-7 when I was supposed to be 
having fun and doing it. But I was having fun. I mean, yeah. I was dancing in front of the stage. I mean, in my own kind of dancing, you know? <laughs> but <laughs> moving around a little to rhythm, um, and and going to amazing places. Well, I, you know, as Paul Simonon says, if you love what you do, you'll never work again. A little song that's going to be on the Max's Kansas City album called You Make Me Cream in My Jeans. Hi, I'm Legs McNeil, and I've been friends with Bob Gruen for, seems like, several, several lifetimes. I first met Bob when I was in high school. Believe it or not, Bob and I went to high school together. I was a sophomore. I was about 15 or 16. Bob was about 28, 29, 30. They, I don't like to say this, but he wasn't the brightest kid in school, okay? He, he, they kept holding him back and holding him back. I, I think he had a problem with reading. He couldn't read. He was illiterate, you know? And um, he was kind of a lonely, depressed guy. He sang and sat, sang. He sat in the back of the class. He didn't have any. I think I was his only friend at the time. And um, he, he kept. He, I was very, 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 very popular in high school. I was the captain of the football team. I was the prom king. I, I was everything. Okay. And Bob wanted to hang out with me. And and. Um, he didn't know what he wanted to do. And I said, why don't, Bob, Bob, I took him upside one day and I said, Bob, why don't you become an artist? Because if you're an artist, you don't have to do anything. You can, you know, take a shit and put it on display and people will, you know, you know. So he started drawing these stick figures, you know, and he'd go out on the street and he'd try to sell them, you know, in his bell bottoms and his frizzy hair and try to sell these stick figure painting pictures that he drew and they weren't selling, you know. and. Um, I had a Polaroid Swinger camera. Um, I don't know if you remember those from the 60s, you know. They were very, very, very popular. And uh, I was taking class pictures because I was the head of the yearbook committee or something. And, and um, Bob said, wow, wow, that Swinger camera's really neat. You know, I wish I could afford one. And I said, here, Bob. So I gave him my Swinger camera. I said, Bob, why don't you take pictures of this? And he said, what, 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 what will I take pictures of? And I said, I don't know, Bob, you know, people, places, things, you know, you know, go to the, go to the gas station, go to the airport, go to the train station. So he hitchhiked out to the, to the, to the airport. And that's when Led Zeppelin's plane was flying in. And he took that famous shot with my Polaroid Swinger camera. It was basically a Polaroid in the beginning. And, um, that launched his career. But now when I call him, because I, I kind of lent him some money, you know, and now when I call him, he just hangs up on me. I say, Bob, this is Legs. Do you have my $65 I lent you? And it, it, he just hangs up. He won't acknowledge that, that I started him, that we went to high school together, and that I started him off on his career. Asshole. Just like to remind you that we're some darts, and uh, it's all for the love of rock and roll. Right. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bob. How you feeling, man? 75, huh? Well, I'm only a couple years younger. Don't, don't feel bad. <laughs> hey, listen, I was just thinking about uh, when we were down in New Orleans, man.
Only 1975. Gee whiz, where'd the time go, huh? You, me, and Link down there. We had a ball. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I miss you, man. And, um, I wish we were together, but, uh, we'll get through this thing and, uh, we'll do some rock and rolling again. All right. Happy birthday, brother. I love you, man. Hey, Bob, it's Linda Ramone, wishing you a very happy birthday from the Johnny and Linda Ramone Ranch with all my fabulous Bob Garuins around from BB and Todd to Johnny and Sable to Alice and Cindy to Sid to Mark Boland to Jeff Beck and the most important, the Ramones. We miss you, Bob. Take care. Um, but I think that people who are still friendly with bands, I know a bunch of young people who are friendly with this band or that band, and they go on the road with them just like I did. There's no money in it. Like, that's the kind of thing people don't remember. I didn't get paid to be on the bus with The Clash. Right. I knew enough people to get the record company to pay my hotel, which was a big deal. Most photographers wouldn't get that. I was right, right, lucky, right. you know. But um, you did it because you loved it, because it was something to do. And somehow, as a young artist, you managed to pay the rent by hook or by crook. And you also met all these artists kind of when they were starting out. That's when you meet them. Local. He, back then, I couldn't meet Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, that kind of access was always difficult. So now a big band in a stadium, yeah, it's hard to get to see them. But bands that play in clubs, I always told people, if you can go to any club and take pictures. Oh, they yeah. don't have photo passes for clubs usually. you know. And that's when you can meet a band, go to the soundtrack. Sound check, meet them, show them your pictures. If they like your pictures, maybe they'll like you. Um, and people always ask me about that, and there must be something about my personality, maybe you like my smile, but people do seem to like me. And, and you're a uh, very likable person. And, and I mean, in high school, I was friends with the artists, I was friends with the theater group, I was friends with whoever stayed up at night. <laughs> and that lifestyle carried me into the music business. If you ever see him in the street, tell him I want to spit on him, kick his fucking ass, and throw my drink in his face. But I love you, Bob. <laughs>
lucky to call you a friend since I was a young wee teenager <laughs> doing bad things. <laughs> oh, man. To the man who's seen everything, done everything, and has got the photos to prove it. All I got is uh, Bob did it, 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 dang a dang dang a ding a dong ding. Happy birthday, Bob. Bob, how you doing? Happy birthday. Can't believe it, you're 75. You're still ticking and you're still clicking. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Congratulations on your new book, too. The music is rough, not polished. The lyrics are shouted, not sung. It's always belligerent, hostile, and definitely loud. The dolls are a social phenomenon. In the city, they sell out wherever they play. They're in their late teens and early 20s, so is their audience. This is a new generation and a new music. Each time it seems to get crazier and crazier, where does it stop? <clears throat> I don't know, probably some kind of extreme violence. There was an act at Max's Kansas City a few weeks ago, Iggy Pop is his name, who cut himself on stage and ended up with 16 stitches. And that's the 6 o'clock report. <laughs> Hey, Bob, happy 75th birthday. I'm so glad to know you and so glad to be in your portfolio. You the man, etc., etc. Salute. Love it, old chap. It's been a while. <laughs> the big thing that counts is both you and I are still standing. People ask me, what is my biggest achievement? I think it wasn't that. Because it, it seems like it wasn't meant to be. It, it just is. But I love you, Bob. And I hope you have a wonderful night. And uh, I'll see you in my dreams, darling.
alias Scarface, Giovanni Ginsal, alias Johnny Thunder, Rocky Joe Hank, Threaten His Stuff, Killer King, alias Arthur Harold Kane Jr. And just... Hey, Bob, it's Jimmy and Rocky wishing you a happy 75th birthday and many, many more. Love you, bud. Take care. Your personality as you intermingle, I mean, you, you work from the inside of, of groups. It's not like, you know, you're there. I mean, I'm sure you've done this in times, you know, you're hired for a thing, you go there, hi, sure, goodbye. You you go but, but the actual, the, the photographs that are your crowning achievement are ones that happen because you're hanging out. That's an mm. a, a interesting way. You're not like some distant, objective journalist, you know. You I can't... do get better pictures when I know the people and you're spending a couple of hours and you can wait around for a good moment. You know? And they're comfortable um, with you. And Well, that's the thing. Like I said, I was comfortable with artists from an early age. So it was no surprise. When I came out of high school, my parents uh, wanted me to go to college and um, I tried a couple of colleges and that didn't really work. Uh, so I ended up dropping out, you know, turn on, tune in, and drop out, and I lived with a rock and roll band, yeah. uh, which went through a couple of names. They're actually on the internet as the Glitter House, one word, um, and they did the vocals for Barbarella. It was their big break. Oh. Bob Crew discovered them. They did the vocals. Uh, that was my early introduction to it. I got to know Bob Crew. He hired me to do an my first back of an album cover. Um, and I met Bob Rolance at Electric, uh, Atlantic Records. He hired me for my first job, Tommy James and the Shondells opening for Hubert Humphrey <laughs> at a rainy parking lot in Yonkers. Uh, but even then, I got to talk to the band enough that they gave me a ride home. And I always thought back, like, yeah, I just get along with bands, people. I don't know. Not everybody. I'm well, we all need friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially now. I used to uh, want to be Allen Ginsberg, and I decided <laughs> it's much more suited for the arm. Um, rock and roll. I met David in front of Jen Spy, who's standing on on a pole, and he's starting a riot. That's <laughs> <laughs> true, too. Is it true? He's a good he's preacher, man. He's a preacher, man. Are you into politics? Um, can you tell? <laughs> I used to see David on 8th Street and 6th Avenue, you know, remember they used to have all those no no noisy nuts, you know, they always used to speak out. That's why I met David. <laughs> I didn't hear that's why I started seeing him. He was throwing, um, his bucks and jackets. I'm a social Social reform. Hey, Bob Gruen, Jim and Sarah here. We want to wish you a really fantastic birthday. Um, not only are you an amazing rock and roll photographer, but we also consider you to be the Zalig of our lifetime. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you're not only just really cool, you're such a nice person. We love you so much. Anyway, happy, happy birthday to you. And keep drinking that albino zebra blood or whatever it is you do to keep staying so damn young. Anyway, we love you, Bob. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Bob. What about uh, someone like Alice Cooper? Well, that was early on in my career when I met the first publicist with Ike and Tina Turner, and he introduced me to Billy Smith, who um, actually brought me to Elton John first, but then he worked with Alice Cooper. Billy Smith was a wild publicist who just came up with great ideas and... Um, and really helped Alice Cooper get on the map, but helped me get on the map by introducing me to Alice and Shep and Gordon, who was the manager. Uh, and I did a lot of jobs with him. I got along great with Alice. Oh, and Alice yeah. has the fantastic sense of humor. And right from the beginning, it was just very comfortable. I hung out with them, you know, uh, did all kinds of sessions. Alice dressed as a sailor. I have a great picture of Alice as uh, Santa Claus, uh, sitting on Wolfman Jack as uh, Little Lord Fauntleroy, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> we did that session, that was really funny. Um, 
And I just over the years, more and more, and Alice is still performing. Alice is one of the most theatrical entertainers. He's, totally. He doesn't come out with a guitar and sing a song. He acts out each song in a different way. Usually gets killed at the end because a lot of his songs are evil, but there's a moral to the story is that evil <laughs> does die, and then he comes back and nice. he's success at the end. Uh, and he still does it today. I think he was supposed to go to Switzerland when the lockdown came. Wow. And, uh, and thankfully, he we sent me this. We were all supposed uh, to go somewhere. Yes, we had great plans, great plans. No, I was going to be in the New York put off for another 10 years. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be put off. We'll just come back with a new world in a new way. And, Amen. Uh, you know, we'll 21st keep going. century. I'm definitely doing that. Well, Bob, it's your birthday. Alice Cooper here. Um, you've immortalized so many people in your photographs. Some of your photographs are the most famous ones ever in the world. And uh, always great to, to be able to mention you in, in my radio show, because uh, we talk about the history of rock, and you're definitely a big part of it. Uh, and since it is your birthday, I did write you a song, okay? It goes like this. I wrote the song in just a minute. In Bob Gruen, you're in it. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Well, it's no Bohemian Rhapsody, but you know, uh, it's all for you. Happy birthday, Bob. That was always something important to me with the pictures was not just to show the facts, but to show the feelings. So you're actually emotionally involved with the pictures. And some people tell me they turn a magazine and they see one of mine, they know it's one of mine because they get a feeling. Because uh, sometimes they're a little soft and the, and the subject's not sharp, but the feelings are always clear. Absolutely. Because uh, that's Christian when I go through the contest, you know, John Yoko once talked to me about it, aren't they in focus, you know? And if you look at my contacts, a lot of my pictures actually are in focus. But it's not the moment that you feel. And the one that's slightly soft, that doesn't take all the facts, but gives the feelings, here, here. is the one we pick. Bob. You've been on the planet for like 75 years, most of which you spent rocking and rolling. Now, I've been lucky enough to know you for about half of that, and from that time till this, your enthusiasms never waned. And as such, you're a testament to the power of rock and roll. Happy birthday, my friend. Congratulations on mm. the book. Yeah, well, on, thank you. Uh, on uh, achieving uh, a golden age. And of course, love you, Bobby. We've been friends for uh, centuries. And uh, I hope Who's that we have a lot some of years. really Decades. good times coming up. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. We'll be dancing we a white wedding at Bowery Electric soon. I soon. know it. Well Happy birthday, Bob. What a milestone. 75 and you don't look a day over 60. You're amazing. Congratulations uh, on reaching this birthday with such joyful enthusiasm for life still. And I hear you have a book coming out, so I can't wait to see it. Love from Somerset where it's getting cold, um, but I hope you're cozy in the city and with masses of love and hopes that I'll be able to come and visit you both soon. Happy birthday, Bob. also had a very good progression. A lot of rock photographers have a specific era they, they have, and then they don't kind of move forward. But you've moved from the 70s mm. into the 80s, mm. Green Day in the 90s, mm. and you know, now. Now I, mean, I like the kills, Allison and Jamie. <laughs> nice, uh, nice. They do a very weird, but very meditative take on rock background like nice. it's kind of a rocking beat but they get so far out um, and then screams and yelps and things and then it's really mellow and just amazing I just find it very meditative like um, do you still get excited when you go out to a rock show and, and a good one yeah well hey Bob hey hi I wanted to uh, write you a video right call video video you, call you, write you, but video you, and congratulate you on your um, new autobiography, Right Place, Right Time. This is very exciting. I wish we could all be together to celebrate you, carry you around on our shoulders, and, you know, the celebrate stuff. So the way people celebrate usually is like that. 
right? Uh, anyway, this is very exciting. Um, congratulations and also happy birthday. And before the, the Roaring Twenties, yeah. after the yeah, Spanish the pandemic flu. of 1918 and 19 was followed by the Roaring Twenties. So keep that in mind. And in, uh, I think John Hansen's song, Lonely Tenement, he talks about the fact that if you have no money and you can't pay your rent, you can't buy a new winter jacket and you just don't have money, but you probably can get five or $10 and you can go and buy a drink and dance. Mm -hmm. And that's what people do. They'll still have fun. Amen. I hope. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There has to be some fun coming up, but right now. Hi, Bobby. Happy birthday, darling. I can't believe I've known you now for 49 years. I'm trying to get the skull in there. Anyway, happy birthday, my sweetheart. You're one of the best friends I've ever had, and I love you very much. Happy, happy, happy birthday. I miss your parties. I wish we could all be together. Jimmy, I think we need to have one more person. Say happy birthday to Bobby. Oh, we have doggies too. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Bob. Bob. We, love birthday. we love From you. From Nashville. Yay. Bye, sweetheart. I hope I see you soon. And you've traveled considerably. I mean, you've had exhibitions in all over Europe. Brazil, um, I've, I've been from Moscow to Tokyo, uh, to the mountains of Japan, to Crete, the island of Crete. We've got friends over there. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, I'm really getting around. I've had exhibits. I, I, when this started in March, we spent the first week in March in Sao Paulo. There's a big museum called Museum of Image and Sound. It's a big, legit place, uh, three stories. And, uh, and my exhibit was the whole top two floors. Wow. The whole floors. Amazing exhibit. I just is supposed to reopen this week. It's been closed since then. Uh, we went down there, we had a fantastic opening party. Supla played Imagine. Uh, oh. I think we got a version of it here for the video. Um, and he played at the opening party and there's a lot of people there and they loved the exhibit. I gave a talk for a whole audience full of people and three days later the government closed the city. And it's been closed since and they're just gonna open it now this week. Uh, so I hope, and they, they couldn't make a new one because the museum was closed, so they're opening with my exhibit again. And it's just elaborate and fantastic. Um, and I've had exhibits all over. This is actually my third exhibit in Sao Paulo. I've had several in Argentina, Amazing. Mexico City, Japan, uh, several in France, London, all over the place. And Mars. I never expected any of them. Hey, Bob, this is Supla from Brazil. Love you, man. Wish you all the best. Okay, Elizabeth, Chris, there you go, kids. Imagine.
Happy birthday, Bob. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, you kind of led the way for me and the idea that uh, you could work really hard and have a great time doing what you love. And the idea that if you love what you do as much as we do, that we'll never work a day in our lives. So happy birthday to you. And uh, I wish I could be there with you. You have on page 233, because I have... Oh, really? You wrote that? I've, I've, I've memorized <laughs> right. every line. Of course. Thank you. You talk about understanding Zen in a Japanese taxi oh, cab. Oh, a moment. And yeah. uh, what you say about it, I really, it really hit home to me. It said, you're being aware of the present. And to me, that's exactly what a photographer does. Yeah. He takes a picture of the exact present moment. Right. How would you, you know, how would you have I never kind of that combined in your that, philosophy? but yeah, that is true. You have to see what's happening in the sense of which moment to catch. And you have to anticipate that it's coming in order to be in the right place at the right time to catch that. You know, the title of the book is Right Place, Right Time, but I always say then you have to do the right thing. <laughs> and then you have to get you up know, in the morning and do the work. And then you have to develop a film and call the people and then call them back and ask for the money, you know. Um, but yeah, I was in a taxi cab with my friend Gunson. It was the night I met Gunson. And he's quite a powerful person. Um, he owned a lot of nightclubs in Harajuku. Uh, he was involved with some dark elements of the nightclubs, but he was kind of like a gangster priest. Uh, he practiced Iaido, was his spiritual path, which is the sword technique of mm -hmm. meditation. And he, it was the night I met him, and I was telling him how much I had been to Japan with Yoko. I'd come back with the dolls, and on that trip, I was there with the Bay City Rollers when all of a sudden this amazing guy shows up. He was built like Muhammad Ali, but Japanese size, you know, <laughs> solid though. And, um, and I said to him, I love Japan, and I love the ideas, and I love how calm everything is. I said, I want to come back and maybe go to a monastery and study Zen thinking. And he just turned to me and said, You can understand Zen thinking in the back of a taxi cab. And that's when it hit me that, yeah, Zen is about being here now, being aware. And it's not in a monastery, it's wherever you are yes. in the back of a cab. And I've helped, carried that with me ever since. Hi, Bob Gruen. Um, happy birthday to you. I think if Elda was here, she'd be going, mwah, 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 sending lots of kisses to you. Um, it's been a long time that we know each other, and I'm so happy to be able to say that I know you because you're a magical man and you're also a kind human being and um, you're a great dad and you're a great grandfather. So uh, I just want to say hello, happy birthday, sending much love. Hopefully there's going to be many, 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 many more. That was my kitty. All right, there he is. Say happy birthday, Bob. Hi, Bob, and a very, very happy birthday to you. I was glad that you were able to photograph some of the sire bands, and in particular, the Ramones and the Talking Heads. Um, your, your photographs, I think, were a big help to them, although both of those bands were exceptionally talented. Um, not only you are a great photographer, but you're a great music fan, and, um, you know, so I hope you keep rocking on, and I wish you again a very, very happy birthday. And Bobby, what can I tell you? Congratulations <laughs> on your new book. Um, congratulations on, uh, your... I guess this would be your platinum anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? But uh, I'm just so glad to know you for uh, the better part of your life. Yeah, and I never felt like, I mean, when I was younger, I thought being old was like a really bad thing. And Keith Richards said it best. He said he thought being old was really bad, but now he wants to get as old as he possibly can. Right. And that's the way I feel, because I still feel me and my wife go to places and I'm in the middle of a room with 30, 40 year olds. I feel like a kid. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're adults, and I just didn't get to it. Like I literally said, we don't do adulting. We, we just didn't learn that part. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So, uh, Wait, well, so you're there's just hope getting good there. at what you do. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen so many great people that I admire, and even magically got to be friends with a lot of people that I admire. 
um, that I never expected. Joe Strummer knows my phone number. John Lennon would call me up. Uh, that was unbelievable. Right. Uh, you know, I remember the night I met John and Yoko, and I was finally, Henry Edwards called me to do an interview. And when it finally worked out, I was walking down the hall and I was shaking. I was meeting John Lennon and Yoko Ono. I couldn't believe it. But I walked down the hall and I was shaking, just trembling. And I knew I couldn't take pictures like that. Um, and Oscar Wilde's one of the centers, you have to be yourself because everyone's already taken. And I realized like John and Yoko would be amazing if they liked me and if they used me, but it would only happen if I was me and they liked me. So I went in much more comfortable. I did what I did and miraculously, they liked it a lot. And I met him a couple of weeks later, and he told me to keep in touch. And I'm still wow. in touch with Yoko today. That is so sweet. That is you so know, sweet. Um, it's just worked out. Well, it's really nice that you get to know all these people. And you can see it in your photographs mm. from the inside. Mm. You know, they're not like actually posing for you. Mm. They're like letting you look at them through the lens, and that's really a beautiful well, thing I think, about you know, my John art. Lennon New York City picture, uh, one reason people like it so much is that we were having a conversation. We were very comfortable with each other. So in the picture, he's ready for a conversation, and right. he looks like he's about to talk to you, mm -hmm. and that he's very comfortable. Even with the sunglasses, the pop star, but he's accessible. Right. And that's what comes through in my pictures, because they are in the middle of a conversation. And <clears throat> they are accessible because you're in the access. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty great. I was there. Right place, right time. Amen. Out now. Get your copy soon. <laughs> okay. Abrams Books. Yeah, out on Abrams Books, wherever books are sold. That's right. Yeah. Well, good one, Bobby. Okay. Still rocking steady. We want you boys to know that uh, we're out here doing our bit, and we hope that you boys are out there shaking them dead at the marketplace. Thank you. Yay! Bye! Dad, happy birthday from up here in Vermont. Up here in the meadows that I know you wanted to come and visit for your birthday. So uh, shooting this message of love and, uh, and uh, happy birthday from here out in the beautiful Vermont woods. Um, of course, we really wish we could spend your birthday with you, but uh, the world's a strange place right now. You've always been an inspiration for me, of course, and you've shown me the world uh, through a maker's point of view, a creator's point of view, not a consumer's point of view. And you've shown it to me bravely, and you've shown me how to be uh, in the world's venues as if I was meant to be there. Um, and not just a, a visitor, but a part of the action, and I'm really grateful for that. It made me feel like a courageous spirit at a young age. You've always been sweet. You've always shown me how to be gentle with a punk rock attitude. And I'm gonna take that to the end. Um, love you, Dad. You've given me the kind of parenting uh, and family inspiration to make me create a beautiful family of my own. Happy birthday, Baba. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Baba. Baba. We love you. Love you. Love you. I miss you. Oh, we wish you were here. All right. When you're smiling, when you're smiling,
Hi, I'm Bob Bruin here at the Morrison Hotel Gallery. And I'd like to ask you to please make sure to get out and vote. You know, a lot of people think a vote is just a drop in the bucket. But if you think about all the oceans in the world, they're all made out of raindrops. The only way any water gets in the ocean is with one little drop. So put your vote in the bucket, please.